Okay, welcome to lesson 3.1.3, day two. So in the last video, I ended up saying that um, we made a mistake on the horizontal, um, it's called horizontal reflection section, and I told you to cross it out, right? So I promised you that we would work on horizontal reflections on this day. So this category that says vertical reflections, no, this is actually just reflections category, okay? And so the first problem is a horizontal reflection. And you will know it's horizontal because remember what I said last time that horizontal anything happens inside of the argument, inside of your parentheses. So that's what happens here. You have a negative, you change your x to a negative x. This is a horizontal reflection because it happens inside of your argument and it takes your x and it makes it a negative x. So this is a horizontal reflection. I will contrast that with number two, where you can see the negative is placed on the outside of the function. So it's multiplied to the outside of f of x. So this is not inside the argument. This is outside the argument. This one would be a vertical reflection. And also just to draw you a quick picture, the horizontal reflection will go from this original graph to, I'll just, do it in, I'll do it in purple. So that's because it's reflecting horizontally across the y-axis versus, oops, sorry, versus a vertical reflection. It's gonna flip it up and down. So we're gonna go across this blue line right over here. Sorry, that was kind of messy. But if this is your original graph, a vertical reflection would make this your resulting graph, okay? So vertical reflection and horizontal reflection, this is kind of what it will look like. Now that we have kind of pictures of this, and now that we know the first one's a horizontal reflection and the second one's a vertical reflection, let's fill in our t-table. So just like last time, we have our first side of the t-table with our original points from the f of x equation. And then we are going to change it. Notice how it says, negative x inside your argument. Anything that we change inside your argument is going to change your x value. So if it says negative x, we're going to say negative x, comma, y. So we have negative 0, comma, 1. But of course, there's not really such a thing as negative 0. So this is really just 0, 1. Let's do the same thing for the next point. So it's 1, comma, 2. So the x becomes a negative, so negative 1 now. The y stays the same, so it's negative 1, comma, 2. There's nothing to simplify here, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Then the next one is 2, comma, 4. Remember, your x value changes to be negative, so it's now negative 2, comma, 4. And once again, nothing to simplify here, so I'll leave it like that. Let's plot these points. So 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 4. And then let's write the equation for the transformed function. So we have g of x is equal to f of negative x. And remember, f of x was supposed to be 2 to the power of x. Oops, yeah, let me just erase that because I'm kind of running out of space. So originally, it's supposed to be 2 to the power of x, but we changed the x argument to become a negative x. So what you want to do is change this x, wherever we see x, to become a negative x. So now we have g of x is equal to 2 to the power of negative x, because the argument changed. The argument changed from x to negative x. So now I have g of x is equal to 2 to the power of negative x. So this is our equation. From our equation, we can get the horizontal asymptote. Remember, the horizontal asymptote is the number added or subtracted at the end. So in this case, we have a plus 0. And what that means is that our horizontal asymptote is the 0. So let me draw out that horizontal asymptote. So that's what it looks like. And so my three dots are above. They must, my entire graph must stay above this. Um, 
yellow line. So it's going to look something like that. Oops, that kind of shouldn't have touched. There we go. My bad. Don't let it touch. Don't do that. <laughs> they should not touch. The black line should not touch my yellow dotted line because my graph will not touch my asymptote. Okay. The asymptote, remember that analogy I used from like way long ago. The asymptote is like the friend that you like, but then they're friend zoning you, so you're not actually ever gonna get together. You just become closer and closer friends, but you will never get together. And that sounds really sad, but hopefully that helps you remember that the asymptote is something that will get closer and closer to your graph, but it will not touch, okay? So this is your graph. And notice that it's flipped horizontally from what it usually looks like. Usually it would look like that, okay? I drew that really badly, but notice it's flipped. So this is your horizontal reflection. Now let's move on to the vertical reflection. So for number two, we have a vertical reflection. And in this case, notice that the negative is on the outside of the argument, which means we're going to change our y value. x stays the same, y becomes negative y. So let's write out our um, points. So our x value stays the same, and then the y value becomes negative 9. So it was positive 9, now it is negative 9. Let's do the same thing for the next point. x value stays the same. y value becomes negative, becomes the opposite. Last point, x value stays the same. y value becomes negative. Now let's plot these points out. Okay, so I have my three points. I'm just going to connect these. But how do I know where my graph becomes flat at? So in order to do that, let's rewrite g of x. g of x is equal to negative f of x. Notice the negative just appears on the outside of f of x. So all we have to do is put the negative on the outside of the equation. This is the f of x equation, right? So I just put the negative in front of it. Literally just like this negative was in front of f of x. So it's just like that. Okay, so this is your equation. And then notice there is a plus zero at the end of it. So your horizontal asymptote is still zero. Let me draw that out. Okay, so that's our asymptotes. My dots are below this asymptote. So my entire graph must stay below and I'll just get closer and closer to it, but not touch. So that's where my get graph gets flat. Okay, so now we just covered horizontal reflections and vertical reflections. Notice that for the vertical reflection, oops, the original graph looked like this and then it flipped upside down. And then for horizontal reflections, the original graph looked like that, but now it flipped across the y-axis. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.